The other thing I want to talk about real quick was just uh, an article we got an exclusive on. So very, very happy to the guy who sent this in. Can't name him, obviously, because he wishes to be remained anonymous. But but thank you for speaking out, because this is the kind of heroes we need, which is sending out information of... I don't even know if this is illegal. I think it might actually be illegal what's going on here. So so the the, the preamble, Kenny Badenoch, the Lord Emperor... Sorry, the, the the undersecretary for equalities within the within the Conservative Party, who is doing a great job at just smashing down anything intersectional, anything neo-socialist. She's like, nope, get out, not interested. Um, she and her and Liz Truss have been destroying a lot of things, and one of them was unconscious bias training. Mm -hmm. So this feton measuring of how racist you are by we show you some images and then you say if this reminds you of a good or bad thing, and so on and so forth. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of tests. Uh, all of them are reliably now bunk, like yep. proven bunk. So it is it is about as knowledgeable as witch dunking to find out whether or not you're a racist. So absolutely no use to it. So in response, Kevin Bade not decided, well, let's get rid of it. Stop funding it. A defund leftism. Mm -hmm. Good. It's actually nice to see that. It's refreshing. So this is back in December in which they say that it was going to be scrapped. And then uh, before this, she gave an interview to The Independent, which I'm going to get to because there's just some great quotes from her in here in which she's uh, leading up to it being scrapped. So she says that unconscious bias training should be removed from the civil service. We can get the next one, John. And she, um, she Kemi Badenoch, who is herself of Nigerian background, said that some prominent supporters of critical race theory want to create a segregated society. Well, she's hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what they want. Yeah. They, in the response from them, they did get a, a quote from one of the critical race theory proponents who was like, no, I don't want segregation. It's like, yeah, but all your work calls for it. So yeah. why should I believe you? You li you literally end up segregating people because of race. I don't know why you say you don't. I mean, you're the people demanding that cultural appropriation yeah. is something evil because how dare the cultures mix. Yeah. It's like, never mind the race part. You haven't even got to that. I mean, your views on racial mixing as well are well known. I mean, among your, your types. It just so. keeps happening. Anyway, so they continue with this interview. I, I love Kevin. She's, she's such a great... Yeah. Minister. Miss Badenoch sparked controversy earlier this year by saying that the UK was one of the best countries in the world to be black. And this week warned that teaching the concept of white privilege as a fact in schools, Black History Month lessons would also be Ill illegal. But what are you going to do? Tell, tell this black woman that her lived experience is not valid? You know, I live in the UK and I think it's one of the best countries in the world in which you can be black and therefore... And I'd be like, no. But it's also just named the country then. Yeah. China. That's... But, oh, no. But like... <laughs> No, no, but, but by their own standards. If the if the standard is purely lived experience, and she's saying, well, my lived experience is the best country, and I'm the one in government, so shut up, and I'm, we're going to do as I say. I mean, what yeah. could their argument be? There isn't one, really. Yeah. So she had the, the also the point, though, of making white privilege, teaching it as a fact to school children illegal, which is just great. Mm. Like, it's evil to teach young white kids that they are privileged for having white skin and therefore oppressors and so on and so forth and they're evil people for existing as but white the, like the best part about this is the black woman in charge is going to explain why you don't have to be white to get ahead in britain yeah done i mean you would think this would have been done a long time ago but apparently but the very nature of the thing we're describing proves her point so also Black History Month lessons being illegal in schools because, yeah, I mean, this is a perfect yep. example of what she was talking about, of the segregation. Yeah. I mean, saying that there is a month in which we will have black people's history and then all the rest of it is white people's history or, you know, non-black people's history. I mean, it sounds like segregation. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's one of the interesting things. I've seen yeah. Dawn Butler criticize Black History Month really? because she's a, a Labour Party MP, quite yeah. radical. And even she's like, no, this is terrible. Why are we segregating off black people into a separate month? Because you're woke, that's why. Exactly. She's like, no, black history is British history. Why are you putting me in a month? <laughs> She's like, well, I agree. You asked for the, the bullet. So this is what you get. You get segregated history. Uh, tell me why that's not segregation. So she continues. I go further and say this. That is the best country for black people. I've lived in the US. I've lived in Nigeria. So I feel like I've got some context to compare. I look at South Africa and I look around Europe and ask, are those places better to be black than in the UK? I don't think so. Prove her wrong. How? How could it be done? Can't be done. So she also asked about uh, guidance issued by the Victorian Albert Museum suggesting that the term black be covered by people who experience racism because of the color of their skin. So if you experience racism, you black. But if you don't experience racism, then you're not black. Yeah. So if Kemi has not experienced any racism, she's no longer black. I am, I'm glad to, again, be made black. Caribbean food, been yeah. discriminated by the state for skin color. I'm double black now, I guess. So she says in here, this is to politicize my skin color. 
The logical conclusion of what they're saying is that people in Africa who are not discriminated against are on not the basis black. of their race are not really black. You ain't black. Again, yeah. I just love how she's she's on the wavelength. She understands everything that's going on. That's why I like her so much. I'm just thinking of all the, uh, the, the South African parties like the EFF. Who run around going, you know, kill the white man, kill the boa. It's like, well, who's a, who's a black man then? Not you. <laughs> <laughs> like you have, what is it? Um, You've become the white man. Black economic empowerment or whatever they yeah. call it there, which is just uh, discrimination in favor of blacks, in which case, that no, they're all white now. So, oof. <laughs> so she continues. It is associating being black with negativity, oppression, and victimhood in an escapable way it's creating a prison for black people completely correct completely correct i just i it's not even it's not even that it's creating a category of person where the 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 term black is actually not connected to skin color or anything like that anymore it's connected to as she says the oppression and victimhood that becomes inescapable and it turns out that non-black people can become black by making them victims i mean you would have thought you would have seen this coming this is a long history within sure. british politics of which yep. Um, we, we looked into this when we were looking at the term BAME and its mm -hmm. history, that there was the argument from like the 60s or the 50s of Windrush that black people are discriminated against in Britain, therefore they're a special class. And then there were more groups who weren't black but had brown skin. Yep. So then they came up with the term politically black to represent them all. Right. So it just became, if you oppressed, you black. And then what happens when things change and all of a sudden... Now the white, white working class is is <laughs> oppressed and the the african nigerian minister is sat there going listen the black working class <laughs> those, those 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 black people all across the uk the 74 percent of the population are yeah. now black and uh what is it like three percent uh and, now and, white. and and we the white government <laughs> like, <laughs> like me as a white woman can yeah. they knock <laughs> Like, why does, it, why does it have to be this way? I didn't know the Irish were always black, but uh, now we know, I guess. Mm. So there, I, this is why I like Kemi Bade Knox. She's just she's the only one talking sense. So this is the exclusive we got, which is uh, someone in the civil service sent us. So some, hang on, hang on. No blacks, no Irish is just... Uh, it's a synonym. It's just a repetition. Yeah. Yes. It's unnecessary. <laughs> right, okay. That's the, the brave new world we live in. So the, uh, the civil service, under her orders... Banned uh, implicit bias training and cultural bias training, blah, 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 blah. All this mm -hmm. stuff to go because it was obvious nonsense. And it turns out the, the snakes within this organ these organizations obviously don't want to give up the grift. Yeah. And they, they can't really do it on the basis of uh, the names they used to use. So they just renamed it anti-racism training. So there you go. That's a new product. Completely different. Uh, Same course, dog whistle. The Same term anti-racism is a dog whistle for radical left-wing identity politics. So I'm not, gonna read, questions? I'm not going to read every part of this article because people should go over to lotuseers.com and read it because Josh done a really good work at uh, laying it all out, but I'm going to read some of it here. So it says that an unnamed civil servant working for a government department has provided lotuseers.com with a document from mandatory anti-racism training session for the civil service. So this is mandatory. If you're in the department he's in, and I presume other departments because there's never just one department usually, then you will have to take this training. And this is the training which was declared illegal by the state for being stupid and a waste of your time, and evil, because it teaches you that you are evil for being white. I mean, I can't think of any better reason to stop funding this stuff, but I guess I guess the griff never dies. So I wanted to get some images up, just to have a laugh at this, because it is really stupid. Like, it's not even just that it's, it's you know, obviously backwards, but mm. really dumb. So if we can get the, the first image up, image four. So here we go. Activity two, check your privilege. <laughs> God, it's like 2012 Tumblr. I know, right? So, it's so pathetic. <laughs> but th this this is what I was saying, right? This is what I was saying the whole time. It's From word go, I could see that the logic of what they're doing is essentially irresistible to the people who are going to have to stand against it. And so it will just continue conquering every institution until eventually it's literally the UK government that's like, check your privilege. It's just on college campuses, guys. It's just on it's Tumblr. It's just on Tumblr. Yeah, exactly. No, it's just bedroom feminists. No. It's just the British government. Don't yeah, worry about it. Yeah, it's just the American army, you know, don't worry about it. Like, no. Like, what do we have to wait for? Yeah, exactly. Where does it, where can it go from this point onwards? Oh, man. You know? It's only happening to 30% of the population. Like, I don't know. But okay, hang on a second. Like, so. so, instructions. Raise both palms with your fingers showing, right? Okay. How many fingers have you got? Okay. Uh, 10. Sounds like a stupid question, but this yeah. will come important later. I think oh. about it for a second. Yeah? <laughs> How many fingers Listen do I have? <laughs> Listen to the questions delivered by your facilitator. Okay. Of course, weird language because communists always think like this. Yeah. Every time you have experienced one of the statements, put a finger down. So you've got 10 fingers, okay. right? Okay. And at the end, we're going to look at how many fingers you have left standing. Right. So let's, uh, let's go to the next image. You can see here there are 13 questions. Right. Okay. So one, put a finger down if you've been called a racial slur. <laughs> yes, I've been called a gammon. 
Uh, put a finger down if you've been followed in a store unnecessarily. Yes, I was in my 20s when I was in university and a bunch of us went to a 24-hour Tesco's when we were stoned out of our gourds. And the, the they, they, I considered it unnecessary that they followed us around because we weren't thieves. Uh, put a finger down if someone has crossed the street to avoid passing you. Yes, women do occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> because... Put a finger down if you have had someone clench their person in an elevator with you. I can't say I ever remember that happening. Uh, put a finger down if you've had someone step off an elevator to keep from riding with you. How would you know? I mean, uh, yeah. I, I mean, literally, the elevator stops, they get off. No, actually, that, that has happened to me just in a hotel, you know, when it's like you, because when you're traveling, like, you know, I've done it to people. Like, they've either smelled weird or I've been like, oh, there's a bit, this guy's a bit. Like, because he's been drunk or something, and it's like... Yeah, know. but how, how would you know? Like, they pressed the button, and then they pressed another button or something? Well, what I do don't mean? know, but you, you just get the impression, because they give you a side anyway, up, right? so you're on six fingers. Right, yeah, so on six fingers. Uh, so, put a finger down if you've been accused of not being able to afford something expensive. Yeah, by my dad. <laughs> put a finger down if you've had a fear in your heart when being stopped by the police. Yeah, because I was properly raised. Uh, put a finger down if you've never been to a golf or country club with your family. Okay. Don't come from the upper class. Put a finger down if you've been stopped or detained by the police for no valid reason. Well, no, I okay, I've not been stopped or detained by the police. Uh, put a finger down if you didn't grow up in a two-parent household. Okay. Put a finger down if you were being bullied because of your race. Well, racism wasn't really, you know, something that happened to me when I was a kid. But I imagine now there are lots of people who have been bullied by their race, you know, for various races. Uh, put a finger down. Uh, hang on, how many fingers am I supposed to have here? <laughs> <laughs> put a finger down if you've been denied service solely because of the color of your skin. Uh, I suppose if I appealed to the BBC for a job, I'd, uh, I'd get that. Put a finger down if you've ever had to teach your children how not to get killed by the police. Well, what parent doesn't do that? Okay. So you got you got one finger. Hey, that's my privilege. Any fingers left? That's privilege. I love how it's not even specified. It's not even like a rating score of like you've got all ten or no, whatever. You just, just have any, privilege. Any right. you privileged. Okay. So unless you have zero to minus three, presumably, I don't know. Unless you're Cornish or something, then uh, <laughs> then you privileged, boy. It's, I just can't okay, go how yeah. pathetic this is. Thumbs up, privilege. This, this is what the civil service has to go through, and I'm. Oh, it must be horrible. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so the, the next one here is um, some some of the things they list here. So activity six, what could you be accused of? And there's a bunch of lists of like hang on, things. Hang on. Your performances indicators. Yeah, made up word. Yeah. Make you more prone to particular behaviours. And this in turn can make you more susceptible to certain accusations. Read the options below and identify any possible ones. Right, so being purposely offensive, insulting, or displaying explicit racism using racial slurs. Yeah, I can be accused of that. Uh, misinterpreting what I said and trying to convert into something I didn't mean or didn't say or do. Yeah, I've been accused of that. Complacency, sitting there knowingly letting racism happen and do nothing. I've been accused of that. Complicity, benefiting from or racism or being unaware or not. Okay, yeah. Passive systemic racism. So this is just a way of saying you sat in the chair are guilty of all of this. Yes. Because anyone could be guilty of any of this at any time. Cultural well, appropriation. There's also two in there I want to particularly stock on. So cultural appropriation. I mean, the state is asking the civil service workers whether or not they're guilty of cultural appropriation. I mean, you're kidding me. I mean, literally, the, the whole culture shouldn't mix because it's untermensch position oh. is the position of the state well it's the position of the nazi state i mean well it's also the position of the progressives who are putting well, us true. upon our government but I, I like the way that um in the bottom left there negative prejudice behavior based on race so actual racism we have a definition of actual racism right there hmm. but there's also the one just to the right of that selling out to benefit yourself while other people suffer that, that is literally just code for leftists wanting to call you a house n I mean, that is, that is what this person writing this is saying. Like, if you've been accused of being a house in, well, then you racist. It's like, okay. You are that's... a bigot. Your behavior is bigoted and purposely you are intolerant, intending to offend, harm, and marginalize. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just... I, only on the weekends, though, for a like, joke. Like, most of this is stupid, but I just can't get over those two there because, I mean, that the, the one to the right is literally the, well, the BLM lady we spoke about where she was just like, the guys who wrote the race report, they're all a bunch of house ends. Her words, not mine. Could I be accused of active systemic racism abusing my privilege knowingly to wield power? Yes. <laughs> power. I think you're taking too much pride in that. And Com then cultural I, I love the complacency. Sitting there knowingly letting racism happen and doing nothing. <sighs> Oh, God, I'm knowingly letting racism happen. I'm literally doing nothing at all. 
<laughs> so enough about South Africa. Uh. Yeah, so that's one of them. And then there's uh, the next one in which uh, they give you a whole bunch of examples. Now, don't read these because I don't want to read okay, all of okay, their okay. fan fiction. But here's examples of what their definitions mean. I just want to read one of them here in which it's negatively stereotyped. They all eat chicken all the time. <laughs> Steve and the rest of them. <laughs> Maybe we should cook chicken when they come over. Well, the thing I had to read that out for is because it's literally the position of the BBC's yeah. head of diversity and inclusion. This is why Idris Elba's about to get cancelled because he doesn't eat enough chicken. I mean, literally, the head of the BBC, if you did see the segment we did yesterday, uh, head of inclusion and diversity was like, <clears throat> this black character can't be real because he doesn't eat enough Caribbean food. And then the, the civil service here is listing that as an act of racism. So it's like, okay. Okay, <laughs> I suppose so. I mean, I agree that the head of the BBC Diversity uh, and Inclusion area is probably inherently racist. Yeah, I do. I mean, she she genuinely seems racist to me. Because she was just like, if you're not black, if you haven't eaten Caribbean food, which means that the subsequent is also true, if you've eaten Caribbean food, congratulations, you black. Uh, there's but a bunch like, of others. You're not in having here. any black friends. Imagine if, like, right, so now I have to go and find a black person and persuade them to be my friend. Like, Okay, well, like look, you live dude, in a Cornish town, and yeah, you're exactly. the only black do you, guy. Well, so you, do you want to hang out? No, I think you're a dick. It's like, oh man, but I really need a black friend, or else they're going to call me racist. <laughs> like, come on, help me out. No, you're a dick. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, and then there's a whole bunch of others in here, but I just can't get over how someone would write like this as well. Like, of all the all the examples you could have used, you can see some of the the censored parts there. It's just like, really, really, this this is how the progressives think. Okay, I suppose so. And then the last bit here, the the last image I want to show was just the the further reading they have in which they also have here further further training, implicit bias and anti-racism action accreditation. So the thing that is banned, I mean, the guy writing this who's handing it out to the civil service is openly admitting that, yes, we will also now give you the thing that is banned. Recommended reading. Me and white supremacy. Yeah. I mean, this is this is the usual garbage. But yeah. this is one of the problems I have also when we criticise... I can't believe the Mein Kampf isn't on there, to be honest. I'm just surprised. Well, there is that, that essay. I mean, who was it? The, the, the hoax. So there, there was a hoax in which people wrote papers. Uh, uh, the Yes. Uh, Peter Bogosian, James Lindsay, and Helen Pluckrose. Yeah. So they wrote a bunch of academic papers. And they were like, right, how can we, can we mess with them? Yeah. So they, they took Mein Kampf, I think it was the section on education. Gave it which, a feminist rewriting. But Hitler's like trying to convince the world that we should uh, convince people to be Nazis through education. Hmm. And they just took the, the section and renamed all the certain words with like intersectionality, feminism, blah, 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 blah. And then submitted it and it got published in an actual journal. Oh, yeah. It was like... Sterling idea. Yeah. Where did you come up with this? Hmm. Good question. Austrians. So- <laughs> <laughs> the Austrian school of feminism. <laughs> <laughs> Literally feminazis. <laughs> Oh man, oh, I love it. But yeah, I, I'm. I this is one of the things where I'm kind of like uh, annoyed a bit because it's like this shouldn't be happening in government. But you can't actually blame the government at all because I mean, Kemi and Liz Truss did explicitly ban this stuff. So whoever are the snakes that are still promoting this thing, uh, they need to be kicked out. They need to yeah. be you know blacklisted by the state because they are engaging in something that is explicitly banned. And if Kemi is watching this. There you go. Have at them. If you enjoyed this segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can watch the full broadcast live every weekday at 1pm UK time on lotuseaters.com.